Arab Bedouin's Prophecy From millennium past, there were two types of Arabs, city dwellers and Bedouins. Bedouins are nomads. They travel through the vast deserts and are constantly on the move. Even during the Golden Age of Islam, when Arabs were the richest and most learned people on earth, Bedouins remained in virtually the same state that they had been for thousands of years, poor, uneducated, and cut off from the rest of the world. Yet Muhammad, peace be upon him, foretold that these Arab Bedouins of his region would one day compete with one another in the construction of tall buildings. Now tell me of the last hour, asked the man. The prophet replied, that you see the barefoot, unclothed Bedouins competing in the construction of tall buildings. Today we find in the Arabian Peninsula, the Bedouins who used to be impoverished herders of camels and sheep are now not only competing with one another, but also the entire world to construct the world's tallest buildings. How did one of the poorest people on earth, who literally wore rags, become the wealthiest nations on earth? One thing that made this rapid change possible was the discovery of oil. The seemingly empty deserts of the Bedouins had it in abundance. They went from camels to Cadillacs in a single generation. The construction of tall buildings among the Arab Bedouins has even reached Mecca, Muhammad's city of birth. The last few decades have seen a massive surge in building construction in Mecca. The famous Mecca clock tower is currently the third tallest building in the world. In order for such construction to be possible, many of Mecca's ancient mountains had to be demolished in order to make room for the tall buildings that had sprung up. Amazingly, this is also something that Muhammad had foretold. He said, The hour will not be established until the mountains are moved from their places. This tremendous feat of demolishing entire mountains has only been made possible in the 20th century with the advent of technology such as explosives. It's important to point out that Muhammad himself was a simple man and wanted other Muslims to maintain that simplicity. He did not like Muslims to be extravagant. So, if he wanted to will this prophecy to become true, he would have to encourage the Arabs to build tall buildings. Yet, he never did. Spread of Sexual Immorality and Disease Muhammad, peace be upon him, revealed that the Day of Judgment would not take place until sexual immorality had become so prevalent and normalized that it would begin to be carried out even in public places. He said, The hour will not be established until people fornicate with each other in the road, just as donkeys fornicate. Today we live in a world where we are being constantly bombarded with explicit sexual imagery, be it in TV, film, or advertising, and with the advent of the internet, Pornography has now become readily available at any time in any place. In fact, we are finding more and more stories in the news of people being arrested for having sex in public. And an interesting side note is that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, described what would be the consequences of such widespread sexual immorality. He said, Never does sexual perversion become widespread and publicly known in certain people without them being overtaken by disease that never happened to their ancestors who came before them. The increase of sexual immorality has seen the emergence of previously unheard of diseases such as AIDS, just as the Prophet Muhammad had forewarned. A World Steeped in Interest Muhammad, peace be upon him, claimed that the practice of interest would one day become so dominant that even those who try to avoid it will still feel its impact. He said, A time will come upon mankind when they will consume interest. Whoever does not take from it will be afflicted by its dust. This clearly describes the state of the world economy today. In the modern world, it is almost impossible to avoid dealing with, or at the very least being impacted by, interest. Just think about how many people have interest-bearing bank accounts and buy things using credit cards. Even if one somehow manages to avoid dealing in interest directly, almost every aspect of our lives is impacted by it. Central banks influence the purchasing power of our money, and virtually every country in the world, even those considered to be wealthy, are drowning in interest-based debt. The financial system even suffered a global collapse in 2008, a disaster which had plunged the world into economic turmoil, the consequences of which will be felt for generations to come. What makes this prediction amazing is that the financial state of the world over the last century is unique in history. At the time of Muhammad, 
finance was based on commodities with intrinsic value, such as gold and silver coins. Gold and silver have been used as the most common form of currency throughout history. The use of paper money with no intrinsic value, along with the massive debt and interest that it has resulted in, is a phenomenon of modern finance, and not something that could have been easily guessed by Muhammad over 1400 years ago. The Defeat of Rome and the Conquest of Persia During the Battle of the Trench, where Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his followers were under siege by their enemies, being outnumbered three to one and staring in the face of certain defeat, the Prophet made some bold predictions. He said, God is most great. I have been given the keys of Syria. By God, I can see its red palaces at the moment. God is most great. I have been given Persia. God is most great. I have been given the keys of Yemen. At that moment, Muhammad had made the astonishing claim that the Muslims would not only take the lands of Yemen and Syria, much of which was under the occupation of the Roman Empire, but that they would also defeat the mighty Persian Empire. Historically, Muhammad's companions saw this prophecy fulfilled before their very eyes, as they went on to defeat the Romans and conquer Persia. What are the odds that the Muslims, who lacked economic and military strength, could topple the superpowers of the world in such a short span of time. The astonishing way that the Muslims defeated the superpowers captured the world by surprise. As historian Barnaby Rogerson explains, you have to remember that the two great superpowers were the Byzantine Empire, i.e. the Eastern Roman Empire, and Sassanid Persia. They were the dominant superpowers. If you're putting it in a modern parlance, it's a bit like the Eskimos taking on the United States of America and Russia. No rational person would have ever conceived of such a possibility. The sentiment is echoed by historians who cannot explain how Islam became such a dominant force so quickly. Professor of Byzantine Studies, Andrew Louth, wrote, The speed with which the eastern provinces of the Byzantine Empire succumbed to the Arabs remains to be explained by historians. Prevalence of writing Many of us take for granted the ability to read and write, and the abundance of books that are available in the modern age. However, for the people of the past, illiteracy was the norm, and books were very scarce. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born into a society in which very few people could read or write. It is estimated that the number of people who were literate in his locality of western Saudi Arabia did not exceed 17. Muhammad himself could not read or write. Against this backdrop, the Prophet Muhammad made the prediction that writing will one day become widespread among mankind. He said, ahead of the hour, the pen will prevail. The Arabic word used for pen here is qalam, which also carries the wider meaning of writing. This perfectly describes our world today, in which it is the norm for people to read and write and there is an abundance of books, newspapers, and magazines. This has only been made possible thanks to 15th century technological advances, such as printing that took place over 800 years after Muhammad's prophecy. And with the advent of the internet, writing is spreading even more. Anybody with a computer or smartphone now has access to millions of books with just the click of a finger. It's quite powerful that Muhammad, who could neither read nor write, prophesies the spread of reading and writing. The Greening of Arabia's Deserts The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, made a bold prediction about the future state of Arabia. He said, The hour will not begin until the land of the Arabs once again become meadows and rivers. This narration anticipated the greening of Arabia's extensive dry desert environment. As recently as 1986, there was little to no farming in the region. However, over the last 30 years, these deserts have been transformed to grow grains, fruits, and vegetables, thanks to techniques such as center pivot irrigation. This is a process that pumps water to the surface from deep underground reserves, some of which date back to the last ice age 20,000 years ago. Now put yourself in the position of a person living in 7th century Arabia. This region hosts some of the most extensive sand and gravel deserts in the world with very little rainfall. Could anyone inhabiting such a harsh environment ever rationally conceive of the possibility that one day there would be a plentiful supply of water and abundant crops? 
this prophecy also makes a claim about the ancient past. Note the words of Muhammad, the lands of the Arabs once again become meadows and rivers. By saying once again, he is implying that at one stage in their history, the deserts were lush with vegetation and life, and that they will be returning to this former state. Geologists now know that the Arabian Peninsula was, indeed, once filled with meadows and rivers in ancient times. Modern archaeological discoveries have uncovered a number of fossils and conclude that once upon a time, the Arabian Peninsula was much greener and wetter, just as Muhammad had revealed. The Rapid Spread of Islam and the Decline of the Muslims Muhammad, peace be upon him, predicted that the Islamic civilization would reach both east and west. He said, God folded the earth for me, and I saw its east and west, and the dominion of my nation will reach as far as the earth was folded for me. History bears witness to the fact that Islam spread rapidly, both east and west, just as Muhammad boldly had foretold. At the time, this was a geographic expansion the likes of which the world had never witnessed. The Islamic Empire was the largest the world had ever seen. The Prophet Muhammad not only informed us about the spectacular rise of the Muslims, he also foretold their decline. He said, The nations will call each other and set upon you, just as diners set upon food. Someone then asked, Will it be because of our small number that day? The Prophet Muhammad replied, Rather, on that day you will be many, but you will be like foam, like the foam on the river. Here we can see that Muhammad prophesied the dire circumstances in which the Muslims would find themselves. He explained that a day would come in which the Muslims would be large in number, but in such a state of weakness that other nations would invite one another to set upon them. The analogy of Muslims being eaten as a meal was given, which emphasizes just how helpless they would become. This prediction accurately describes the radical turn of events that took place in the Muslim world in the 19th and 20th century. Prior to this, the Muslim lands had grown to become some of the most powerful in the world. From the time of the death of Muhammad until the 19th century, the Muslims were economically, politically, militarily, and technologically far ahead of most of the world. Then the unthinkable happened. Nearly all the Muslim world was occupied, colonized, and militarily defeated by non-Muslim nations. Russia had annexed the Caucasus. France controlled Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia. Great Britain occupied Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Palestine, and India. And the Dutch controlled Malaysia and Indonesia. Of the 50 Muslim countries that exist today, only a few survived occupation, and the ones that did were still subject to colonial masters. All of this is just as the Prophet Muhammad had predicted. At the time, there was an estimated 200 million Muslims representing 12.5% of the world's population. But their considerable numbers could do nothing to prevent the defeat by their rivals. They were weak like the foam on a river. Again, just as Muhammad had foretold. If we reflect on this prediction, it is quite counterintuitive. If this prediction was guesswork, then it would have made more sense to state that the Muslims would be diminished in number and that would be the cause of their weakness. Yet Muhammad predicted the exact opposite a paradoxical situation of the Muslims being vast in number but very weak, and it came true. Historically speaking, when religions lose their influence on the world stage in such a way, it is usually followed by a stagnation or decline in the number of their followers. Yet Muhammad foretold the exact opposite with regards to the religion of Islam. He said that it would continue to grow in terms of the number of followers, to the extent that it would eventually enter every household. He said, This matter will certainly reach every place touched by night and day. God will not leave a house or residence, except that God will cause this religion to enter it. Today we are witnessing this prophecy unfold before our very eyes. Islam is currently the fastest growing religion in the world, with nearly one in four people on earth being a Muslim, and is forecasted to be the world's largest religion by the year 2070. This is despite Islam being constantly attacked by the media, the colonization of Muslim lands, and the many wars that have been waged in the Muslim world. Even the name Muhammad has prophetic implications. 
It's an Arabic word that means the praised one. The Quran states how Muhammad's remembrance will be raised. We elevated your mention for you. Since this verse was revealed over 1400 years ago, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been the most praised person in history. Today, not a second goes by without a minaret somewhere in the world publicly proclaiming the time for prayer and saying, I bear witness that Muhammad is the Messenger of God. Moreover, the name Muhammad is consistently the most popular name given to newborns across the globe. This is despite the fact that Muhammad never encouraged Muslims to adopt his name. In fact, he said that the best names are Abdullah and Abdurrahman. Now we've analyzed a number of the Prophet Muhammad's prophecies, which were made over 1400 years ago, and have seen how he has accurately foretold many things. Purely from the standpoint of basic probability, for someone to accurately guess about such future events, which spanned across multiple nations in different time periods, many of which were outside the sphere of Muslim influence. To give so many predictions without making a single mistake is utterly impossible. Today, millions of people believe in false prophets and follow false systems for guidance in life. As human beings, we're willing to follow false prophets, man-made systems, and baseless superstitions, but why don't we accept the real guidance when it comes from God? God empowered the Prophet Muhammad with accurate prophecies as a way for us to distinguish the true prophets from the false. Truth has now arrived, and falsehood perished, for falsehood is, by its nature, bound to perish. This video is based on the book, The Forbidden Prophecies. To learn more about the evidences for Muhammad's prophethood, please download your free copy of the book at the link below.